Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Bloom. Welcome back to the channel. Um, as we saw yesterday, I'm going to do the midweek reviews in two halves. So I did Tuesday night's games yesterday, so today we're going to be talking about the Wednesday night fixtures. Um, all of last night's games, um, it was six on Tuesday, six on Wednesday, so a nice split to give a bit more time to talk about those games. Midweek, all done. Five to go now for everybody except four teams. And we had important results in automatic playoff and relegation positions. And fortunately for people like me doing this, um, still all open to change as we go into these last few games. Obviously, supporters of teams um, in those positions would rather it was all sorted out. But hey, you know, soon, soon enough, I think. Um, like I said, I did a review yesterday, so if I don't talk about your team tonight, just go back on the channel and um, check that out already up there. Lots of good feedback already. Let's start at the top, as per usual, and it was Norwich 2, Reading 2 over at Carrow Road. Shades of winter again at Carrow Road with late drama there. Three goals um, in the last minutes of that game, including a 97th minute. Equaliser for Reading. Uh, Maite gives Reading a lead on 30. Powerful drive for him. Uh, great goal by Godfrey to equalise. Give and go from centre-half. Smash that one in. Um, having a really good second half of the season, um, Godfrey. Um, Zimmerman heads in from a corner straight after. And Norwich fans are just thinking, you know, this season just gets better and better and better. Everything's going good for us. But Reading get that equaliser in the 97th minute. Nice finish from Renner Motor takes advantage of Krill probably um, having a defender stood in his way and sticks it in the top corner with his left foot. The stats say that Norwich should have won this one, but it's gone for them so much this season with, with the form when they have been on top. They've generally won games over and over again, so I think their fans will accept one or two um, against them. And not really the end of the world. Doesn't really change that much, to be honest, because Norwich is still way, way... Out in front, um, seven points gap still there. And we'll find out about Sheffield United because they drew. So Norwich keep parity with their opponents. And really, egos aside from for Canaries fans, you just got to get up. It doesn't matter if you finish first, second, uh, by one point, by seven points, what have you. Just get up there, get that money and put yourself in that elite tier has got to be the big picture. Um Get a lot of comments from um, people telling me this Emmy Buendia stat and his win percentage. So another one for them because he's suspended and down goes the win percentage again. Norwich um, obviously play much better when Emmy Buendia is in the team. Um, Reading, interesting team Reading because the, the points that have gone on the board since Gomez took over have been really good. Um, it's another point gained because Rotherham obviously lost. So they join three other teams on 41 points. Rotherham punching up from 39. You can sense the huge but. Reading's points, a lot of them have been very, very unlikely. And it's a matter of... I don't want to use the term luck because people get cross with me in the comments. But certainly um, any game that um, you create way less chances than the other team and win has a slight air of fortuitousness about it and I mean I haven't done the research but certainly Reading's win over Ipswich was the 3-2 against Wigan was um, this one they're picking up points without necessarily playing well in games so on the one hand great because the points are coming in for Reading is it sustainable over the last five games um, we will find out um, Reading may well survive just on the basis of their finishing but need to look at that next season if they do stay up um those of you who pay attention to it, the xg table has read him down in 23rd which says generally in games they're snatching points and performing above what the stats say their performances should be so um that said um a lot of people think um norwich will finish in the automatic spots a lot of people think red will stay up and this result won't really change either opinion there as we go forward for the last few games. Um, the race for automatic behind Norwich, Birmingham won, Sheffield United won, so honours even at St Andrews. Stevens up from left wing back supporting 
Mark Duffy um, smashes in the opener there. Um, Michael Morrison sticks one in from a set play just four minutes later. Blades end midweek in third, but it's a one-point gap now with five games to go. I think Leeds fans, Blades fans, they need to be relaxed after all of this because we've already seen the past three games. There's going to be twists and turns. We'll do more analysis on the remaining fixtures. Maybe I'll do another video on just these two teams. But Leeds edging it with the points. I think Blades have just slightly preferable fixtures looking at the running. So going to be a really, really interesting one. Could go down to that last day of the season. Um, Blues have done really well over this run. They got the nine-point deduction. Then they were very competitive in defeat against West Brom, that was a typical West Brom win where their good players bailed them out of a, um, a game where they seemed to have less strategy than their opponents, Birmingham. Uh, they beat Leeds, obviously, now they've drawn with Sheffield United. Second, third and fourth, um, all in a row. So good work as ever by Gary Monk there. Um, Blues have had their say in the automatic race now. They're going to have a say in the relegation race because they've got Rotherham, Wigan and Reading all to play and they could potentially stick the dagger in on Ipswich on Saturday if um, they can draw or beat Ipswich. Ipswich will be down on Saturday. So um, I think Blues are going to pick up um, a fair few more points, to be honest, between now and the end of the season. Um, and also, um, good luck to Michael Keithton-Belt, who, uh, cruciate ligament there, it's going to be nine months for him, so bad news for the Blues centre midfielder. Um, moving on to their um, City rivals, Aston Villa. Rotherham won. Villa to big win again for Villa. They're just getting the job done brilliantly at the moment. Um, quite the game here at the New York Stadium. Abraham misses apparently on 12. Mings is then penalised for a handball um, in the box. Second yellow for him. Um, I haven't seen a slow-mo of that, but um, looked an interesting decision, let's just say, before I get accused of an exit Ipswich player bias on that one. Um, off he goes, red card. Um, Volk scores the penalty. Rotherham will be looking at this thinking we're 10 against 11 for, I don't know, an hour. You know, it's always five minutes of stoppage time now. Um, so it's a real chance lost for them because into the second half, a Ajayi penalised for handball in the box. Those who believe that refs make um, make-up calls will be um, interested in that footage. Um, Codger takes this one instead of Abraham. He smashes it in. And on 58, just beautiful Grealish. What a great player this guy is. If, if you could have a goal that sums up Grealish, glides into the box, ball on the floor the whole time, takes it, receives it, he's in the box, no panic, beautiful touch. And when a lesser player would just smash it, just rolls it into the net. What a great player. Um, Grealish, in my team of the year, you can check that back out. Um, just don't read the comments because um, people seem to get a bit angsty about teams of the year, um, strangely. Um, so great stuff from Grealish and it's Jack's seventh straight win since he came back. Villa on absolute fire. And have they shut down the playoff race now? Is it done? Um, because at this same time, they've swapped over with Villa. Villa had that losing streak. Uh, sorry, Borough. Borough had that losing streak. Villa have the winning streak. Four-point gap now between Borough in seventh and Bristol City in sixth. The Robins have that game in hand. I know Derby um, do have a game in hand, but... Looks pretty good now for those teams in the playoffs. Not to say this is the championship that it won't change still. Rotherham stay in 22nd spot. But they now have three possible teams to um, aim at, Rotherham. I know if you're a Rotherham fan, you won't care if you've got three teams to aim at. You'd rather have another one below you. But in the absence of that, and they're still in the bottom three, it's good that they can shoot at three different teams now. But as I keep saying, I've said this all along about this relegation battle... None of it matters if Rotherham don't put wins on the board. They've got six points in the last six. Remember, there was a time where they had three wins in six. You know, a couple of games ago, you look back on the form table. Um, they need to put at least another two wins on the board in this last five games and preferably go into that last game in contention because we're going to mention it a lot between now and the end of the season. If they're still in contention, Wigan, Millwall um, play on the last day and they could potentially kill each other while Rotherham sneak past them. So it's important that they just stay in there. But they need wins, Rotherham. And I know Villa are on form, but 10 against 11 in a one-goal lead, they'll consider that a chance, even though when you look at the big picture, 
and the wages and the money's paid. Um, yeah, Rotherham versus Villa is a bit of a mismatch generally. So um, all credit to Paul Warren in that respect. Hull 2, Wigan 1. Hull win again. Um, Powell gives Wigan the chance to pick up a rare away win here. The opener on 41. Nice finish from him. Uh, Campbell and then a late one from DeVeese give the Tigers all three points. Third win in a row for Hull. Jumps them all the way up to ninth level on points with Derby. Five off the playoffs. We said that gap opened up. I think this might be the peak of it for Hull though because I just had a look at their last um, few games. Borough, West Brom, Sheffield United, Swansea who are on the beach and actually playing quite well. Bristol City as well pushing for playoffs. Um, those people who will say, oh, Hull have won three and they're five points off. Um, a lot of people look at the playoffs and think, oh, anyone can get in. But it would take definitely uh, against the odds eight-game winning streak for Hull um, and uh, pretty much against the odds um, either Villa or Bristol City collapse as well um, there. Wigan now 21st um, as the three teams above Rotherham all collect. On 41 points. Next two games for the Latics. Norwich. I'll be there. And Leeds. So good chance for Rotherham to strike. You'd assume Wigan are going to point pick up either 0 or 1 points. They won't beat either Norwich or Leeds in the next two games. So if Rotherham can take care of their business. Um, they can really drag Wigan into it over the next two games. And I'll say it yet again. Wigan versus Millwall. That potential monster game on the last day of the season. If things are up in the air. And I'll reiterate that again, Rotherham. Rotherham don't get the wins. None of this matters at all. There is no race. Um, Brentford 2, Ipswich nil. A bit of a dead rubber at Griffin Park. But I was there. Probably Ipswich's last visit to Griffin Park on the basis um, they'll be in League One next season. And Brentford moved to the new stadium. Um, check out my match review elsewhere on the channel. Um, strong first half from Brentford puts Ipswich away in this one. But typical of Ipswich season, they should have taken a lead. Quainar clean through, goes for a dink, hits the post, then straight up the other end. Uh, Mopai, Watkins with the goal. Could have, with no sense of hyperbole, been 4 5 nil at half-time to Brentford. Uh, Brentford have been on the beach for a while. Now they're sitting 14th. Realistic chance of them getting into the top half. They can keep up their form. Very interested to see the ins and outs in the summer there. Uh, Mr. Ben Rama and Mr. Mopai looking good. Um, Ipswich will be relegated on Saturday if they do not beat Birmingham. I mean, it's been coming for a while. We're just waiting for mathematical confirmation on that. Uh, Millwall nil. QPR nil. Our final game for this midweek. Stalemate. At the den, three shots on target each, one big chance going to Rangers, say the stats, so not a lot in it, although that says Rangers possibly edged the game. Second game in charge for John Eustace, bit more satisfactory than the mauling they took on the telly on Saturday up at Norwich. Uh, Rangers, they keep six teams below them, six point gap on Rotherham with five to go, they're going to be fine, good night for them really, because they also kept Millwall at distance. Um, Millwall could have um, tightened right up on QPR with a win there. They've just got to see out the season now, Rangers, and figure out who their new manager is going to be, what they're going to do going forward. Millwall are still in it. They still have a game in hand. In the group on 41 points, any of them could get sucked in. Six games left there. They've got that game in hand, like I said, for the Lions. Sheffield United, Villa and Bristol City are all in those last six games. So um, three of... Those games you'd think might go by with difficult chances to get any points. Um, they've got that seismic end of season clash that I've mentioned about 20 times now up at Wigan on the last day of the season. They've got to target the other two home games, Brentford and Stoke. Um, both teams will have nothing to play for. You're at the den, build up that atmosphere. Those are the games where Millwall need to pick up at least three, but preferably four or six points in those those games, given they may not score many in the others. And would you want to be going a one-off clash away at Wigan, who do do well at home on the last day of the season, to stay up with possibly Rotherham sniffing around you um, to just try and pull you in right at the last minute? Um, that concludes all of the games for this midweek. Excuse me. I won't talk about Saturday's games because we'll do a live stream tomorrow night, I guess, 6.30 or 7 o'clock or something, I will publicise that. Um, so come and get 
involved in that. Really interested in your feedback. Been using the YouTube Premieres feature where um, we can do a live chat alongside the video. Um, so give me your feedback on that in the comments if you think it's good, bad, what you want to see from the channel, whether you want me um, live. Difficult in the middle of the day because I know a lot of people obviously are at work and I will be too in a couple of weeks too. So um, less chance of these middle of the day type videos coming. Um, that said, way more content. Um, live stream Friday. Won't be at a game on Saturday. I've got family stuff, but I will be at Wigan versus Norwich on Sunday. Any ideas for videos, get them in. And then we go into that mad Easter weekend where I should be able to definitely take in a couple of games that following weekend where really things get settled over Easter don't they? Um, some big games there and some big chances for some teams to really get things done ahead of the end of the season. Um, subscribe, comment, thumbs up, keep it civil. Let's try and have a nice grown-up corner of YouTube rather than the shouting and slanging and swearing that we get in other places. Follow me on Twitter, at Benjamin Bloom. And please come and get involved in the um, live stream Tomorrow night previewing this weekend's game as the brilliant championship rolls on. Thanks for watching.